Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who is excited to be talking about the new Rome Streets album, Kiss the Ring. Who's responsible for this album? Why is this such a great album? It's another year, another year of great releases from Griselda Records. This is probably the best release from Griselda Records this year. Now, I love Conway. He's my favorite member of Griselda, you know, outside of Makami. But I think this is more solid than God Don't Make Mistakes. I like Benny, but I think it's better than Tana Talk 4. I like West Side Gun increasingly. I think it's better than Peace Fly God. What, what is it that makes this so great? There's a few people who we might credit. Now, before I, I talk about this, I want to ask you a question. And you tell me in the comments if you know the answer. Who directed Nightmare Before Christmas? It's Halloween, okay? So you're, you're typing out there, and you're sitting there, and if you're doing what I, what I asked you to do, you probably typed in the words Tim Burton. He didn't direct it. There's a guy named Henry Selleck, who is the director of Nightmare Before Christmas, James and the Giant Peach, and he has the dubious distinction of directing movies with two other men's names listed in the title, and his name is not in it. Walt Disney presents Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Walt Disney gets top billing, then Tim Burton, and then the guy who actually directed it. So, so in this whole album, I think we can see a similar thing with three different people. So who's the Walt Disney of this whole project? It's West Side Gun, who is executive producing this. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what is it about West Side Gun that makes him so interesting and so good. I've compared him to Puff Daddy. I've compared him to Kanye. In this case, I think of him as sort of like a reverse RZA. So, you know, the RZA was the in-house producer for Wu-Tang, and he did everything, and then he just got all these great rappers to rap on top. This album is the reverse of that. It's just one great rapper, and then a whole bunch of other great producers. So that's the first name I would say. This is West Side Gun's Kiss the Ring. Then we have one more person whose name is heard 50 times on this album. Conductor Williams. Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor, we have a problem. 47 more times, and I will get to how many times Conductor's name. Now, I talked about this on Reddit, on, on, the, on the Griselda subreddit. Some people count 48, I count 50, okay? Th this is such a Conductor Fest, I require two Conductor hats. Do I look silly or do I look cool? Tell me about that in the comments as well. Uh, it's, it's the main debate about this album. Is it too much, Conductor, we have a problem? Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor, we have a problem. Personally, I can't get enough. I cannot get enough of that producer tag. Um, in the original video, which is some guy freaking out, uh, seems to be having almost like a psychotic breakdown on the, on the Washington Metro line. He just keeps pressing the button saying, Conductor, we have a problem. Someone could be shooting me and no one would be able to help me. Conductor, we have a problem. In that video, he says the word Conductor 53 times. So, nice try, Conductor Williams. We need three more. But he produced seven of the 17 tracks. And with his name all over the place, it's reasonable to say that maybe we should call this, this album West Side Guns Presents Conductor Williams' Kiss the Ring. Now, there is an argument to be made that even though Conductor Williams says his name 50 times, and even though he is one of my favorite active producers, that he's not even the best producer on this album. This album also has three tracks by Camouflage Monk, three tracks by Daniel LaFleur, one track by Derringer, Sadhu, Green Lantern, and the effing Alchemist, okay? It is a murderer's row of productions. And I will be discussing, you know, who is the producer of the album and who has the best track on the album. Don't forget that part of what makes rap different than other art is that it is specifically and intentionally competitive, where much of the time I think creating competitive situations is silly and debasing to the nature of the art that we're studying. With hip-hop, I don't think that's the case. Now, of course, there's one producer who should be here, one producer who is missing. That's Nicholas Craven. We'll be talking about him on tomorrow's video, where I'm going to be talking about Nicholas Craven's album with Boldy James and posing the question, who won the great underground producer war of September 2022? So here we have the album. 
West Side Gun presents Conductor Williams's Kiss the Ring. Who's left? Who's the Henry Selleck? <laughs> it's the guy whose name is on the album, Rome Streets. That's Streets with a Z. You see behind me, I have the special edition Ransom and Rome Streets album from last year. I bought that on vinyl. And it's funny because Ransom released an album this year too. And I really like this album, Coup de Grasse. But I like it about half as much as I like Ransom's solo al project and however much I like this project. It's odd that together they're great, but separate they are somehow even better. Better as individuals. It's hard to say why Rome Streets is so good. Because on the one hand, you know, I was reading some people talking about him and some people said that he was very relaxing. And that's true. And then on the other hand, he has a line where he says his rap is like boiled water thrown in your face. And I'm like, that's also true. Somehow he has this way that is both relaxing and amazingly aggressive and attacking. He's remarkably solid, but not boring. Because when you say solid, that can mean boring, but he's not. His flow is good enough. It's varied enough. He's not using cryptic slang. He's not using the same themes over and over again. And if we had to break down the themes, they're quite interesting. You know, he's really, really insistent on this idea of audio dope, meaning that now he's a drug dealer, except what he sells is music. Stove God Cooks is on the album at a certain point and says, do cocaine numbers with that vinyl. Someday I'm going to do a whole breakdown of the economics of this underground renaissance and compare it to <laughs> blues music in the 1990s. Uh, but, you know, this is the main theme, you know, that, that he was on the streets and now he sells music. And what I like about it is that he sort of glorifies it, but then he also will every once in a while throw in a kind of cautionary tale or he'll talk about how difficult it is. It's, he, he glamorizes his life without really glamorizing crime. Does that make sense? So it's like, uh, I don't think he is saying that, you know, crime pays, but he is explaining how crime paid him and how he has a much better job now. He has remarkably solid choruses, you know, in general, hip hop and choruses. I don't, I don't like them going together too often, uh, but I really like his choruses. And at times he's even a storyteller. You would think <laughs> with a, an art that is filled with as many words as hip hop, that there would be more examples of great hip hop storytellers. And right now I'm saying it, and you're typing on your keyboard, what about Slick Rick? What about Nas? What about Biggie? Okay, but there should be a lot more that come to mind. And tell me who else comes to mind, okay? I'm not saying they're the only three, but in general, it is not an area of hip hop that I think is followed enough. And he has a particularly good story on this, song, on this album, which I'll get to later. Now, I'm gonna give you my stamp, my example song, uh, my, my favorite song off the album. And so I'm not going to tell you who the producer of the album is, but I am going to give you the song of the album, the best produced song of the album. And it's not Conductor Williams. It's Camouflage Monk and the first track, Big Steppa. What does this sound like? <laughs> this chunky bass line, this great drum beat, and then these little sounds. I'm going to imitate it. It, it's that kind of sound. And it just has that big... I mean, everyone uses the word boom bap, and boom bap is a great word, but this beat absolutely booms and baps. It's so good. And then Rome Streets just delivers with that great, calm, yet aggressive style from city to town, private to public residence, dime to pound, any measurements, know what the method is, got rappers hating and they B words, naked in my messages. I smoke your whole top 20, F5, that's definite. Choke the rap game till I got no left in it. It's like I got tricked dice, I'm rolling nothing less than six. Just like playing around with words, that great attack, just a perfectly executed rap song. And almost every track on this album is like that. It, it's just a perfectly executed rap song. Up next is Hard On Froze by Conductor Williams. Seven, seven times we hear the name Conductor. Beautiful warbled beat, kind of like a, 
like a marching band snare and like the way he raps is like right on top of it. When I talk about his choruses, this is a great example of his choruses. Mind on money, heart on froze. First of all, just that expression, heart on froze. Not saying a frozen heart, not saying a cold heart, heart on froze. Gun barrel on fire, smoke out the nose, razor blade on the table I used to chop the O's. Keep my Gucci soles on a rapper's effing throat. Just great delivery. You know, just that, so the, the fact he was able to keep the heart on froze made it that he could have some kind of rhyme with nose, o's, and throat. And it's a great image of this sort of the, the cold-hearted nature of his life in crime. And even just the way he says it, gun barrel on fire, smoke out the nose. It's hard, it's hard to really describe because he's just describing something. But I think he does it really, really well. And then the beat just plays out, Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor, we have a problem. Next song is by Conductor. Again, Conductor Williams, the song's called In Too Deep. This is actually a track that he gave to Makami on a project I have not reviewed because I don't know how to listen to it. <laughs> listen, you love, you, you love my stories about being a middle-aged dad, right? Well, unfortunately, I really am a middle-aged dad, which means I don't know, I don't know how to listen to that album. I, I can't figure it out. Um, I think it's actually better here. I mean, I did manage to find some rip of it on, on YouTube at some point, somewhere, I don't know where. Um, but it's this great beat, it's like the, like the kind of jazzy drums and silo, xylophone, and it's this little warbling thing. And is that the Conductor Williams trick? Please tell me, because I, I, I still have a lot to learn about, about this invisible renaissance and all these great producers. I mean, I know, I know the RZA used to warble beats and he's the father of every <laughs> everything that we're hearing. But I mean, it seems that that's a real trademark of Conductor Williams amidst this whole crew, you know, besides his saying his name over and over and over and over again. Um, the quest to acquire fortune is never ending and selling all these Percocets don't come with a pension. Plus these pills pay me more than all those views and mentions. So it's a, it's a beautiful idea here because this is another theme that comes up in the album a couple of times is going to be followed the next song, the precarity of a life of crime. Precarious. You know, you're, you're at the edge. You're not in a good position. You might be making a lot of money, but it's not a sustainable life. Selling these Percocets doesn't come with a pension. It's great. And it's a great reminder too, you know. I mean, my job is tough. It's tough. Being a French professor is great, uh, but there's an administrative uh, part to it. Um, there's a lot of stuff you have to do that, that isn't all the fun stuff of, like in the mind. But I got a pension. <laughs> I have good health insurance. Uh, one should not overlook those things in their life, you know. Uh, and it, it goes really nicely with this quote that comes before the next song, Soldier Boy, produced by Conductor Williams. Four, only four times do we hear the name Conductor, either in the Conductor or Conductor We Have a Problem. Uh, soundbite. So it's a quote, it's a, somebody speaking, I don't know who it is, saying that you have to save your money, you have to save your quarters, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you save. And it's cool because right in here we have this little cut of bedtime story with Slick Rick. Now they're planting a seed, they're going, this seed's going to grow into a tree later. But would you tell us a bedtime story? Because this is not a bedtime story. There is a bedtime story coming up later, but this just plants that seed. Um, very hard-hitting beat with a piano loop, again, slightly warbled. Uh, I just I just enjoy Conductor Williams' beats so much. And it's not like they're radically different than what everyone else is doing you know, in this whole stable of Griselda producers. They're just really good examples of it. And maybe that's actually, maybe that's why he works so well with Rome Streets, because it's not like Rome Streets is radically different. You know, like, like you hear Stove God Cooks, and you could you know Stove God Cooks' voice, and he has a specific delivery and a specific style, and it's wildly different than everything else. And that's great. <clears throat> but there's a sort of like solidity to this. Um, and the chorus appears to be referencing Soldier Boy. I was asleep when Soldier Boy was popular. So I wasn't paying attention to new music. At some point I have to go back because he seems to be a very super important guy. Then we have Conway showing up. And here he mentions no Fenty in the bricks, the whole load was pure. Fentanyl is another theme that appears in this album multiple, multiple times. And if you've been watching this channel, you know that I am fascinated by Fentanyl's presence in hip hop music, um, particularly because I have people in my life uh, who I've lost to fentanyl and it, it, so it hurts me personally and it makes me realize the 
how obnoxious that is, that that bothers me when all these guys are talking about crack and heroin and all these drugs that have been ravaging communities for decades. But, but the one drug that actually touches on me, hits me personally, helps me to understand why some people might not like hearing about crack dealers. But it's interesting because I think it's tied into this idea of just the bad side of being a player, of being a drug dealer. Is this rise of fentanyl and ODs and anyways. Um, yeah, seven figures what I grossed from tours. That's what he says. But hey, Griselda didn't come to Rochester. It's like an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half. I could have seen Griselda in concert. And, but they, they don't go. <clears throat> anyways, why, why doesn't Griselda play more concerts in Buffalo and Rochester, New York? I have theories, but I don't know. <laughs> they come from nowhere. If you have an idea, please tell me in the comments because I'd love to know. Because, you know, I went to that, I went to that Push a T show and I saw 10 times more Griselda merch than I saw Push a T merch. Buffalo, mm, word, got a feeling like the old New York, send lawyer money, bro, he got to go to court. And then it ends with a great quote of Kanye saying, I am a god. People ask me, who do you think you are? I already told you what I thought I was. A god. I want that more, too. I want that quote more all over the place. That's like one of the great quotes in hip-hop history. Next song is called Tyson Beckford, named after the famous model. This is produced by Derringer, so the main Griselda producer, who, you know, I, I jumped on the Griselda train with uh, WWCD, and I've only heard, like, 15 tracks produced by, <laughs> by Derringer. He is not nearly as active as the rest of these guys are now. I don't know why that is. Starts off with almost like a James Bond style, like orchestra hit, and then these just these strings with this rising tension, and then sometimes a little bit of descending piano. A uh, very cool chorus here. Stay woke, stupidity and power is a sour mix. I built a castle out of a pile of bricks. I like that. I like that because obviously he's talking about you know bricks of cocaine, but it's funny because like of course you build a castle out of a pile of bricks. That's how you build castles is with bricks. But it's. It's this funny sort of like double single entendre play with that. And just stupidity and power is a sour mix. He will do that. He will use these funny words to make the rhyme. Maybe that's what I like about him. Is that he's like a super good rapper with a great flow who's not afraid to get a little goofy with the rhymes. Like for the rhyme's sake. You know what I'm saying? Like heart on froze. Or like sour mix. I mean, is that, a, is that like a thing that the kids on the street say today? Like, do they, like, hang around and they're like, this is not lit. This is more like a sour mix. I don't know how young people talk. Next song is called Destiny's Child, or Destiny Child, produced by Danny LaFlair. Simple bass notes, I mean, uh, simple notes back and forth on a xylophone. The drums sound like, the, it sounds like the drummer, uh, like, just got out of a coma. <laughs> it's a very cool, pained drum beat. Uh, just like almost almost no bass in here a little bit of saxophone hit the, the drums themselves are playing this kind of beat which is like which is like a really simple funk beat which is actually kind of like it doesn't sound good but i think it's intentionally not good it's like the first drum beat the first kind of uh, a funk beat you might teach yourself and then these just great lines opening lines even a big gun got a little black hole the desk of these record execs probably hold your black soul if you sold it not me i'm in the driver's seat soul controlling never take never talking cheap my teeth stay golden so there's a lot of this about independence and i do you know uh, like what like uh, i'm asking so many questions of you i haven't even asked you to subscribe yet or smash the like bucket show me how much you can like the smash bucket how much, how much do you like Smash Mouth? <laughs> Tell me in the comments how much you like Smash Mouth. Um, but like, what is the financials of Griselda Records? Because I know they get dis distribution deals, but like, do they really keep all the money? <laughs> like, is it really all going to West Side Gun and, and, and Makami and the other guys in, in Griselda? That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool if that was actually true. <laughs> if, if these businesses, if, if 90 cents went to West Side Gun instead of 90 cents going to Universal Music Group, which as far as I can tell is the case. And it's true of Rome Streets as well, where he's fairly independent signing, signing with Griselda. Right. 
Um, what I like here is he's also kind of a different flow on this album. Like his his flow changes, his style changes are subtle but noticeable, especially if you listen to the album over and over again. By the way, repeat listenability. This album, you could just you could keep this album on, and with the variation of the producers and the flow and the style, you could just listen to this album just repeat, 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 repeat. This goddamn week, eleven albums I want to review that came out on on Friday, eleven. This is my second choice. On any other week, I would just be listening to this. I started from the audience and now I'm running this ish. Uh, Blow for Blow is the closest thing to a posse cut on this because it has Still God Cooks and Benny the Butcher. Conductor, we have a problem. Four times. We got four conductors, we have a problem here. What's everyone complaining about? Only four times. I mean, that's pretty funny that that's the floor. I mean, usually with the producer tag, if you get it twice, you're like, whoa. All right, calm down. Pierre does not want to come out here. <laughs> but okay. This has like these flutes rising. This is, got a, this is the most sort of, I'd say, developed beat by Conductor Williams on here. With these like rising flutes, this kind of like underwater drum. And then like after seven bars on the eighth bar of this sample uh, or of this production, I don't know, um, it gets this cool warbled trill. Stove God comes in. I just, I just love Stove God. I just love it. I just, I love his voice. I love his addition. I love the way he comes in with that great line. You're doing cocaine numbers with that vinyl. Yeah, itch. I took the wax and went Daniel Sun, Karate Kid reference. But you know, wax on, wax off. It's funny. It's cool, and it's much better than selling cocaine. Just so dynamic. And then we get Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher's had a lot of good verses this year. Like a lot of really good verses this year. I mean, Tana Talk 4 had a lot of great verses. So this is recency bias. But this is Benny the Butcher's best verse of the year. Conductor, we have a problem. Maybe not. Professor, we have a problem. Someone, hey, who said that? Someone put that on one of my comments. They said, Professor, we have a problem. Say that was me and I'll give a little heart to your comment because that's very funny. Professor, we have a problem. It's probably not his best verse. He's had so many good verses this year. But I'm I'm slick like raindrops falling off an umbrella. I'm a hustler so I can deliver if you got an order because they got rich off of ish that was free like a bottle of water. Way to call out bottled water. <laughs> Who there when your dollar's shorter on my Cadian free agency Pow and offers, and I won't take a dollar shorter. You know, so Kevin Durant is in free agency. He's trying to find a place to go. I hope he doesn't go to Boston. Um, but, you know, like, it's interesting because that really is Benny the Butcher's position where he's, like, trying to find the right label, trying to find the right place. Um, this weird quote at the end about someone saying, I'm cracked out on Jesus. Next song, we got Ugly Balenciagas. Here, I'll wear it like all the, all the jerks. All the jocks in my school used to wear the hats like that. Oh my god. I, just, I hate those guys. I hate myself right now. Ugly Balenciagas. Eight conductors. Warbled saxophone. Ah, ahs in the background. Kind of otherworldly. Um, it sort of changes throughout the bars. Again, more and more of the same thematics. I made nice profit pushing paraphernalia. Ugly like chunky Balenciagas. I mean, uh, Switch now. It's only the dope I sell you. Ugly, like, chunky Balenciagas. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm trying to get into fashion. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying. But uh, uh, it's also ugly. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. But so much of that Balenciaga stuff, I don't get. Like, am I really going to pay, like, $200 for a t-shirt of The Simpsons? Like, that just says Balenciaga on it? The next song is still by Conductor Williams. This time, only two. Conductor Williams is on here. More warbled piano, the drums, but then nicely the drums cut out at times. Uh, I, this great attacking moment. When God molded me, he made nothing else like it. It's easy to be yourself, but lame, still try and bite the likeness. I picked that line to quote just because it shows the simplicity and the power of Rome Streets' delivery. When God made me, he molded nothing else like it. It's easy to be yourself, but the lame still try to bite the likeness. Like, that's secretly a an inspirational quote, <laughs> you know? That's secretly like, it's easy to be yourself, Rome Streets. Hey, if you're out there, if you're out there, and you're graduating high school, and you have a yearbook, 
and you quote Rome Streets, something from this line, it's easy to be yourself, let me know and uh, I'll send you, I don't know. Oh, I got an extra copy of um, Hitler Wears Hermes Side A. Eight Side A. Send me an email to my, uh, to my, <laughs> send me an email, okay? Send me an email to my professorskybusiness at gmail.com and I'll, I'll send that to you once I see your yearbook printed out there with It's Easy to Be Yourself, Rome Streets. I don't think anyone's going to do that, but maybe they will. Uh, then it ends with this uh, thriller sound. So that's the other thing about like, I, just, I, I love, I, I just, I love Conductor Williams and I love him because he also has this theme where not only do you have to know Conductor and Conductor, we have a problem, but he's obsessed with the music video for Thriller by Michael Jackson. So we have now not just him talking to the girl in the car or in the movie theater saying, I want to stay and watch the movie. Now he's saying, he's actually talking a behind the scenes interview about the Thriller video. Next song is called Armed and Dangerous by Rochester's own Green Lantern, uh, DJ Green Lantern. Kind of a cool soul beat, kind of a love song. <sighs> she looks me in the eyes when she's sucking it. Ugh. Yo, don't start off with that lyric. Forget it. Just, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't, I just don't, I don't like sex songs. I don't like sex rap songs. By women, by men. I just, I did it. Mm, mm -mm. And this is not a bad one, but this is maybe the only skip on the album. Even though I really like, I really like Armani Caesar in general. Uh, and she's not bad here. And I like the idea, you know, love is another four-letter word. It is interesting, the tension. I do like that it's a sex song that is largely about the tension that exists in these relationships and about the, the transactional nature and how that transactional nature deteriorates human connection. I just talked my way into liking the song. This is a good song. <laughs> this is not a skip. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, this, this correlation between, you know, like the way that just how all they see is dollar signs when they F... Um, actually, I think it redeemed itself. Well, that was a quick turnaround. Uh, next song is by Camouflage Monk, Cry Champagne. Like kind of harps and strings. No drums. No drums. The bass is almost like a heartbeat. I'm a rapper now. Uh, had the work. Uh, had to work in the pot sizzling. Uh, I do like too his sort of his trademark is just saying never. Like that's his thing. It's just never. I think he should release an album called Never. Non-Factor, again by Camouflage Monk, very underwater sample, again no drums, a little bit of percussion, uh, hustling, mm, who just happened to be a rapper, and here we get West Side Gun, like, could someone check in on West, like, is he okay? Because like, he's like chill, he's like low key, he's great, his verses are great, I mean he says do, 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 but I mean, he's like old and wise is this just him being an executive producer just <sighs> then we get long story short this is the payoff on the slick rick reference now this is the alchemist beat and what's cool is the last two songs didn't really have any drums and now we have the Al now we have alchemist with the hardest drums on the entire album just piano and, and just these really hard drums, some distorted noises at the end. And this is delivering on Slick Rick. This is the bedtime story. This is a beautiful story about, well, not beautiful, a terrible story, beautifully told, about two different guys. One guy has hoop dreams, but his mom's a fiend and his daddy wasn't around. His name was Derek, but they called him busy, calling for 60, effed up his knee, effed his knee up trying to D up, and now he's addicted to Oxy. So... It's just a story about a guy who ends up hurting his knee. He wanted to be a basketball player. He was better than everyone else, but he hurt his knee. And then he, a few months ago, took a fake pill, heard he died. So here we have fentanyl killing this young man who is addicted to Oxycontin, okay? Who sold him the Oxycontin? Jermaine. Jermaine who sells it because he has a daughter and he wants a Range Rover. So for two, for a bad reason and a good reason, support his family and for luxury. Whoever lasts the longest in the jungle will succeed. And then the police come and arrest him and he's going to be in jail forever. So it's this really dark story. And he, and he ends it with, they both could have been superstars. Him for balling, him for bars, because Jermaine is also a rapper. Sometimes the hood is undefeated. It's mad hard to beat the odds. Uh... Like, do you know what I'm saying about the kind of old school, like anything for a rhyme, almost even corny, like saying it's mad hard to beat the odds. 
like that like that sounds like uh, that sounds like someone who doesn't know how to write raps trying to just add an extra syllable, but he makes it awesome in this great song. Long story short, uh, both trying to ball, dreams of making it to the top, but the rock bottom ain't too far to fall. Busy got a mural on the wall. The hood effed up when the Chinaman sent the fentanyl. So this is referring to the fact that a lot of the fentanyl that comes into our uh, country comes through the mail. A lot of it is fabricated in China, and it's sort of this weird like story. Like, there isn't a moral. It's it's a lot like it's a lot like the bedtime story by by Slick Rick, where there isn't really a moral. It's just like a guy got caught up and cop shot the kid. And that's it. Uh, and that's kind of what this is too. And I think it's very important, and I think it helps to give dimension to the rest of the project. It's not just a straight up like. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. It's like, this was the part of the world I take part in. I think we're supposed to read Jermaine as a sort of symbol of who he could have been if he did not succeed in the rap game. Next song is called Serving by Danny LaFlair uh, featuring Boldy James, who I'll be talking about tomorrow. He's going to be in, <laughs> in uh, Nicholas Craven's uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Very slow drum beat, kind of buzzy bass, trilling piano. Um, the, the opening line, the opening verse is just has all these acronyms. F my PO, F the judge, F the DA, I drive an AMG, watch out for the government, they have a fake IG. <laughs> uh, I also like to, like, he gets fun at times, you know, cost 10 bands to, for a verse of this, do a money dance in the junkie's hands, drop 20 Zans, been serving ish. Like, just even just saying the word money dance is just funny because obviously you immediately think of, uh, what's his face, the guy with the tattoo, 6 9 or is it Lil Pump? Who did the money dance? I think it was 6 9 uh, You know, but... Uh, and then Boldy comes on and he's just so relaxed. He's just so relaxed. There's dogs barking in the back, but he doesn't care. He's just going to rap. We'll talk more about him tomorrow. Reversible. I've got to do it, folks. Reversible requires the double conductor. This is going to require a double conductor cap right here. All right, we're gonna go full deer stalker cap because we have conductor said 17, <laughs> 17 times on this song. This is the new fashion, by the way. Actually, um, West Side Gun was dressed just like this at Fashion Week. So, anyways, in case you want to know who who sets the trends, it's Professor Sky. This is his best beat. Half of the song is his best beat on the album. The swirling, warbled sound and these compressed drums and the way this bass comes in, it's just the perfect Conductor Williams, Conductor, we have a problem. Uh, this has this great rapping attack style. You're washed up. My rap is like boiled water thrown in your face. You're washed up. Garbage is how you all come across. Smoke, you don't want any of ours. And then we have like, I think 13 conductors in a row. Conductor, we have a problem because it's a beat switch. And then we get this awesome, one of the better Conductor Williams beats on here. I mean, really, I think we could say this has two separate beats to it. Uh, more of a drum forward flute sound. Most of these rapidy rappings ain't wavy. I'm Boss Baby, better know that. I just like imagining him as Boss Baby, the, the Alec Baldwin character, like Rome Streets as Boss Baby. Uh, money ain't evil, it's the person. Money ain't evil, it's the person. Okay, I think, I think we're done. I think we're done with Conductor. Conductor, you've done a good job. Thank you for a wonderful album and for pissing off a lot of uptight people. I personally, I want to say this to Conductor Williams. If you release an EP that is 25 minutes of no music at all, just the guy saying, Conductor, we have a problem, I will buy that. I will lit I will wait online to buy that. And I'll put it on. People will be like, what is this music? And I'll go, Conductor, we have a problem. The next song, Fashion Rebel, produced by Sadhu, who I like quite a bit. Um, beautiful bass line on here. You know, it's a thing, like, because the production all the way throughout is so consistent with all this invisible renaissance, Griselda, Griselda adjacent, Griselda similar, Griselda algorithmically paired stuff. All the beats are so damn solid. It's hard to know what to say about it. So one thing you can do is kind of focus on what are the instruments that are put forward? What are the instruments that are put back? Here we have a bass that's really put forward. One of the best verses from, uh, 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 
from Rome streets here. Flood the town, pitching like Garrett Cole on the mound. Garrett Cole sucks. I'm out for paper. I won't fold and gold that weighs pounds. Been through hell, locked in a cell. Jake doing shakedowns. Now I rip stages. See how quickly life changed around. Black back street scholar with the soul of James Brown. Nice call from James Brown. Mind like Michael from Fresh. It's all a game of chess. The bishop be the one that can usually put the king in check. I want to thank Hip Hop Music for forcing me to revisit the great hood movie classics of the 90s. Because... <laughs> Uh, it's everywhere. So the movie Fresh by Boaz Yakin is this great movie. Have you seen Fresh? Dude. First of all, a ridiculously young Giancarlo Esposito, before he was Gustavo Fring, before he was in every Marvel and Star Wars movie, he plays this like horrible pimp guy. Samuel Jackson plays this like drunk dad. And then a young Sean Nelson, just absolutely killing it. It's like a 12 year old actor, just absolutely killing it as this kid who is running drugs because it's the, the best thing for him to do. He's not like dreaming of being famous. He just realizes this is his best move. And he learns chess from his father, who's the drunk Samuel L. Jackson. So this whole thing here, mind like Michael from Fresh, it's all a game of chess. It's not just saying like, oh, Michael like Fresh. He's actually talking about the character from the movie. And the character from the movie, even there's a scene where he's playing chess with Samuel L. Jackson, where he uses his bishop, you know, um, Actually, no, he uses his knight in that scene. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie in a while. Um, anyways, the bishop be the one that can usually put the king in check. Fascinating reference and a good, deep connection to that movie. Fresh. Bring your best. No choker chain. I'll ring your neck. You've never been exposed to the game, so you'll get finessed. All you humans flow the same. I ain't a lick impressed. Uh, and then the chorus has, every level has a new devil, which I think is funny. The final track is by Daniel LaFlair, uh, kind of a backwards beat. It's, it's fine, cool, booming bass, um, very super low drums. So I'm giving Camouflage Monk the, the album, I mean the, the track of the, of the album, but the producer of the album, of course, has to be Conductor Williams. He just, his production is great. And I personally think the presence of his producer tag everywhere is wonderful. I mean, I guess it makes it more like a mixtape. It sounds like a mixtape, you know? But I think it gives it an energy and a vitality that it wouldn't normally have. So tune in tomorrow, where I'm going to wonder, does Nicholas Craven take the week? It's Nicholas Craven versus the field, okay? Everyone brought their A-game for this project, but it's Nicholas Craven's syrup-ridden album with Boldy James going to be able to topple it. I don't know. Tune in tomorrow to find out. I think tomorrow. Maybe the day after tomorrow. We'll see. There's the camera. Oh, wait. These are my uh, these are my Patreons. They give me money that allow me to do crazy things like buy, the, <laughs> buy these albums uh, on vinyl from like England and stuff. Um, yeah, and hit me up if you want to, if you want to quote Rome Streets for your uh, <laughs> senior yearbook. Okay, yeah, Toby, you want to say hi? My dog just showed up. Toby, you want to tell them where the camera is? There's a camera.